Okay, so we're looking at a letter writing task for the IELTS exam. Uh, it's an informal style letter, which is always, I think, more fun to write. Um, so let's take a look at the topic. So the topic is, you've recently moved to a different house. Write a letter to an English-speaking friend. In your letter, explain why you've moved. Next, describe the new house. And then finally, invite your friend to come visit. So I think this is quite a nice topic. It's quite a fun thing to write about. You can get creative. And the key thing here is just to write very informally to a friend. Uh, so when I'm thinking about writing informally, I'm thinking both of the tone, the vocabulary, and probably the topics that we're talking about. Um, so you can use punctuation, like exclamation points, uh, to sort of show a friendly, joking tone. Um, you can write sort of using informal language um, and you can make jokes and things like that with your friend. Um, so let's take a look and see what this candidate has done. Okay, so you've got Dear Mina, how have you been? Okay, I think that's a, that's a really good start to the letter. How have you been? It's got a nice friendly tone to it, um, very natural sounding. I hope you and your family are fine. Um, fine here, it's a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> Like, fine is just very sort of average and normal. Um, so I would actually say, I hope you and your family are good. I think that's what I would naturally say in the situation. If you say, I'm fine, is very standard, but I'm good, or I hope you're good, is <laughs> suggesting that um, you hope that they're better than just okay. So I hope you and your family are good. I wanted to let you know that I've recently moved to, what are we missing here? To new house, to a new house. Um, yeah, I think this introduction is is good. I would want to, like I said, change this word, and we're just missing one word here. But overall, the tone and the, the structure and the content is all good. Okay, so now we're getting into the reasons why they moved. As I mentioned to you before, I had some problems with my ex-roommates. First of all, they didn't respect my private space. They entered my room while I was working and took my stuff, which made me angry. So I argued with them several times, because we're talking more than once, right, times, but they have never said sorry. Um, but this is, I have, have never said, um, would suggest that you're still living with them, but they never said, so it's just past tense, they never said sorry. Secondly, they barely cleaned up. Okay, so this candidate just needs to be careful of their tense, okay? I had some problems, okay? So this is all in the past tense, okay? Um, so he need, this candidate needs to make sure that they're using the correct tense all the way through. They barely cleaned up the public areas, such as the dining room, the dining room, kitchen, and bathroom. We had a cleaning rules. Can we say, can we have a cleaning rules? Probably not, right? We had cleaning rules, but I think I was the one who cleaned most. These reasons made me exhausted, and that is why I have decided to move to a new house where I can live by myself. I have decided to, okay? So this is tense is getting confusing. So when I say, I have decided to move, so you've decided, you've thought about it, but have you actually moved? Not, no, right? You say that recently you have moved. I've recently moved, okay? But in this one, you're saying, I have decided to move to a new house, Okay. So I have decided, okay, is suggesting that it's still current. Just now, recently, I have just now decided uh, to move to a new house, okay? So we need to be careful of our tense. We want to get rid of this. It should just be I, and that is why I decided to move to a new house. So in the past, again, I decided, and then now in the present, I'm in the new house. Okay? Okay. So if we look at a little timeline, okay, we're now, so say we've got the present, now, okay, in new house, in the past, decided, I have to move. Let's say that was three months ago, in the past, okay. So if he's saying, um, I had some problems, so past, so this is uh, problems. 
Okay, let's say that I started six months ago. Okay, so when it says I have decided to move to a new house, this is here, right? I have decided. Um, so it needs to be now. He's in the new house, okay? So not I had, have decided. It should be I decided to move to a new house where I can live uh, by myself. Okay, so just be careful. Um, this kind of needs to be careful of the tenses, and I would get them just to check the um, past perfect and present perfect tenses. Um, okay, but overall, so just in terms of the tense, I can see they've got a couple of issues with that with their grammar. Um, in terms of the content, okay, and, and sort of the topics that we're talking about, this is a letter to your friend. And my impression when I read this content about all the problems they had with their roommate is that it's very... Um, aggressive and a little bit angry okay so let's look at all the, the the things that they talk about uh issues that they're having with their friends um they made which they took my stuff which made me angry so i argued with them um i the reasons made me exhausted okay so these are quite strong words okay to talk about being angry and to talk about being exhausted, exhausted, by the way, nice vocabulary word, but it's very, very strong language for this tone of informal, fun letter. You want to invite this person over to your house. Um, and so I think it kind of is a bit too strong and a bit too angry, like you're complaining to someone. So I think what I would want to, to see in this answer is a bit more light and a bit more fun. So if they could turn some of these things into jokes... Um, so they didn't, they entered my room while I was working, took my stuff, which made me, so instead of which made me angry, which could say, which made me mad, or you could even say made me kind of mad, or even made me pretty mad, okay, it made me pretty mad, so that would be a, a sort of a more cautious way of saying it, kind of mad, pretty mad, and it's, it's a bit more informal, and it, it's not as strong as saying, which made me angry, Okay, so I argued with them several times. And again, I argued with them. Argued, again, quite a strong word. Um, so you could want to make it a bit softer. It may be kind of mad. Um, and we had a few disagreements. Okay, so it's a little bit lighter. Disagreement is a little bit lighter than argued. So I would think it sounds a bit more informal and a bit more light that you talk about with your friend. Um. Secondly, they barely cleaned up the public areas, such as the dining room, kitchen, bathroom. Uh, we had cleaning rules, but I think I was the only one who cleaned most. Okay, so I would actually put an exclamation point here to sort of show that you're kind of joking about this. So he so said, we did have cleaning rules, but I was the only one who cleaned. So I would turn it into a bit of a joke. Um, so I would put an exclamation point here. Um, so and then maybe this, again, you want to be a bit more jokey. So maybe you want to have something like, um, as you can imagine, this was a bit too much. Okay, so as you can imagine, this was a bit too much. Um, is a bit more <laughs> informal. Um, you're kind of making a joke out of it with your exclamation point, um, and you're sort of talking quite informally to your friend there. So I think I would sort of phrase it more like that. It's a bit more friendly, and it's a bit less sort of strong. So th these are all very good, uh, well-explained reasons for why <laughs> you want to move out of this house, but the overall tone is a bit too angry. So those would be the, the changes I would make. Okay, so now let's look at the description of the house. My new house is located in a quiet neighborhood and close to my work. Um, it has two bedrooms and a medium-sized bathroom. Okay. I don't know if this is really necessary information. It's got a medium-sized bathroom. I think two bedrooms is nice, but, I mean, does your friend need to know about the size of the bathroom? I don't think that's really relevant to the content of the letter. So it's got two bedrooms. Um, maybe you want to say and a garden. Or it's got two bedrooms um, and a big kitchen. Because, again, like, the size of the bathroom, to me, is not something that you would really discuss with other people. It's not really relevant for them to know how big your bathroom is. Um, the bigger bedroom has a decent closet, and I use the smaller bedroom as a study. I, this is a really good sentence here. I really like this whole sentence. 
Um, it's a nice description. The bigger bedroom okay, has a decent closet. And again, nice vocabulary here. And I use the smaller bedroom as a study. I like this comparison that they've got between the two types of bedrooms. And it's quite a sophisticated gram grammatical sentence. So I like that. It is perfect for me because I've always wanted to have an office to draw and study. You could add in a phrase here because you're talking to a friend because, as you know, I've always wanted to have an office to draw and study. I'm so happy about that. Okay, so I think this is this is fine as a description of the of the house. Um, could give a bit more details about the the commute times. So you could use some vocabulary about commuting. Um, but I don't think you need to add too much more in here. Um, okay, so now we're inviting the person over in order to show my in order to show who in order to show you my new place. This is a nice phrase here, new place. I would like to invite you. I would like to invite you over. Okay, it is it is my first time to live by myself, so I want to celebrate this with you. I think that's a nice idea. We can throw a party. Feel free without interruption. We can throw a party. And feel free to hang out without interruption. And again, you want to put a, an exclamation point here because you're making a joke, right? You're talking about your ex-roommates. So you're kind of calling back to maybe a time where your friend came over to your apartment and your roommates came in and caused a problem. So we can throw a party and feel free to hang out without interruption, exclamation point. Um, this is also going to help improve your score because you're using different types of punctuation. I will prepare some food. So if you want, you can bring your you can uh, bring your own drink. Okay, so there's a there's a phrase we would use for this in English, or we would just say BYO. Means bring your own. Okay, it usually means drink. And if you want, so you could just say, and if you want, you can BYO. Bring your own. I can't wait to invite you. Uh, this isn't right. I can't wait to invite you. So this is something you're talking about the future, right? I can't wait to invite you. Um, but this isn't the future. You're, you're inviting him right now. This letter is you inviting him. So it should be, I can't wait to see you. Okay. Um, because you are inviting him now. This is talking about the future. In the future, I can't wait to see you. I will attach the address in this letter. It is not too difficult to find, but if you are lost, call me right away, then I will come to find you. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Um, this is a bit too formal. You don't need to say thank you. It's your friend. I look forward to hearing from you soon. This is too formal. So informally to a friend, you would just say something like, because um, you you've not established the date. Let me know when you're free. Probably would be more informal way of saying that. Let me know when you're free. Um, and then you wouldn't say warm regards. Again, this is too formal. Um, I would probably, I would probably just say, you know, sign off with my name. <laughs> Look for you. Know, let me know when you're free, Rachel. Um, or it's from Rachel, or you know. Love Rachel, <laughs> something like that. Um, so that was this is a bit too formal at the end, um, but overall, um, I think the idea here is okay. I like the idea of that it's your first time to live by yourself. I think that's a really nice uh, idea to put in the letter. Um, I like the idea of throwing the party together and bring your own drink. Uh, one thing that this candidate does a lot um, is I would like to invite you but not informally. I'd like to invite you. It is my first time. It's my first time. Okay, I will prepare. I'll prepare some food. Okay. This whole sentence, you could even make this more informal. If you sort of said something like, I'll get the food. Or even I'll sort the food, meaning I'll do it. I'll sort it. I'll get it. Um, if you get the drinks. Okay, that would probably be a, mo a more sort of informal way because you're friends, right? And you're sort of splitting the, the jobs. If I sort out the food and you bring the drinks, then we'll have a good party. Okay, but overall, I think a lot to like um, about this letter. I thought in terms of task achievement, it was very good. So I'd probably give it um, a 6.5. Um, cohesion and coherence, I also thought was very, very strong. So I probably would uh, give a 7.0. It was very logical. 
and it was consistent throughout. I liked how they talked about their roommates interrupting them, and then later on he gives us things like "let's hang out without interruption," which is referring back to his ex roommates. Vocabulary I thought was pretty good. Sometimes too formal in the choice of vocabulary. Um, but usually pretty good, so I probably give it a six point five. Um, and then grammar maybe um, also probably a six point five. Some minor mistakes. Uh, so overall a six point five for this letter. I thought it was very good, um, and this candidate did a really good job.